Have Your Say, Hobson's Bay is a series of stories and experiences of people who live, work and play within the municipality of Hobson's Bay. Let's hear how their lives were changed because of COVID-19. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Speakers Bank Podcast, Our Voices, Our Views, um, this Disability Edition. Um, I am John, and here's with my partner, Ferdinand. Um, we will be your interviewer for this episode from the JTI Podcast team. Um, today, we are introducing you to the one of the most interesting person that we have met. He's from Altona. Uh, so please all welcome Aaron. Hi, Aaron. How are you today? Good, thanks. How are you? Uh, pretty much good. Um, so uh, welcome to Speakers Bank. First of all, uh, we wanted to thank you for granting this opportunity to interview you to discuss the challenges and experiences brought about by the disability. Um, so before we proceed, um, can you please tell me something about yourself that you wanted to share with everyone? Um, well, okay, I wasn't born with disability. I am um... I got a disability after I had a stroke due to a brain infection when I was 20. And then that, that caused me to lose 95% of my vision and, and restrict the use of my left hand. And I just really enjoy getting the word out to people through Speakers Bank, what it's like to leave to live um, to live with a disability. And you've got to you, and you've got to judge a person on it, not the disability. Yep. So what do you do before you had uh, your disability? Uh, I, was you tell a, something? I was a second year apprentice plumber. Mm. I was a second year apprentice plumber before. And I used to play footy, I used to go to the gym. I just used to do, I just used to do whatever you usual, you know, your normal 20 year old did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Um, so, what are what do you think are the changes that occurred into your life when you had this illness? Like, oh, there was a lot of changes. There was an, an awful lot of change. My vision, obviously, mm-hmm. so I lost my vision, and um, and I, I lost a lot of friends. I lost a lot of friends because I think the friends, I think some of my friends didn't know how to react, mm-hmm. didn't know how to react, and um, and didn't know how to react to the circumstances of what and what was happening to me. So, mm-hmm. so I found it hard to react. So they sort of just went. They sort of just pushed pushed away. Mm-hmm. And but because I haven't when I was twenty, it's where you sort of find your place in the world. It's it's like, you know, you drift away from your high school friends, you make new friends. Mm-hmm. So so it was also hard because I didn't get the chance to really, really um really broaden my horizon and friendship group. Mm-hmm. So yeah, maybe they were shocked as well. And yeah. Then... A lot of shock and stuff, yeah. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people couldn't deal with they didn't know how to deal with it. They didn't know how to deal with deal with the disability and stuff that I had. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. But you know, um, as you go along with your life, you'll meet yeah. people that will be like, yeah. And yeah, you'll meet friends, you'll meet other people. You find out who your true friends are, the ones that really stuck around, you find out who your true friends are. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe that's one of a good thing about that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, so so right now we are dealing with this, uh, how do you call this, COVID disease, of COVID, this pandemic. Um can you describe your life routine before this pandemic as well? Like uh, we know that you live your life like, like for the maximum mm. thing that you could uh, with, uh, with the support of others as well. For sure. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, before so, the pandemic, before mm-hmm. the pandemic, I, I found a Timmy bowling league. Mm-hmm. So, and that got cancer. I also do water skiing. I used to do blind water skiing. Oh. And tote more. And that got cancer because, you know, we couldn't, the caravan shut down and we couldn't go into, because it was up in New South Wales mm. and we couldn't, we couldn't enter New South Wales. And so very lot of restrictions there. And my gym got closed down. So pretty much everything got closed down. Mm. So in the end, we just, in the end, we just, um, I just went for, I would just used to grab coffee because I've got carers that take me out. So I pretty much just used to grab a coffee and go for a walk. So in, in a way it was sort of good because I actually lost weight. Mm-hmm. I actually lost weight though, so in a way it was a bit of a blessing to surprise though. But yeah, because that's all we can do. We can just grab a coffee and go for a walk. Mm-hmm. So 
I mean, that's good. You're um having a positive um outlook, even though yeah, well, that's, uh, COVID-19. Well, that's what sort of got me through it for the last 15 years, to be positive. For the first, for the first you know, two or three years, I was very depressed. Why did it happen to me? Why did it happen to me? Why did it happen to me? And then I came to, to learn and accept my disability. This is going to be with my rest of my life. So I can either mope around and feel sorry for myself or I can just learn to accept it. Mm-hmm. And I just learned to accept it. I just learned to accept my disability. Yeah, that's good to know. Right. So um, we would just like to know, Aaron, so so how are you coping up with the changes brought by COVID-19 restrictions? So you said, um, so you're just going out to have a coffee and then have a walk. Do you yeah, have yeah. Like, any any emotional support coming from anywhere? Do you talk? Yeah, I, so um, for the first two or three weeks, I didn't have any carers or anything. I we I stopped everything because you know me and Dad decided you know it wasn't probably the best idea for me to go out. And, you know, you know, I might get the virus stuff, but then in the end, then me and Dad just made a decision where me and Dad made a decision where it, it was okay for me to go out. So we just went down to a local coffee shop. And we just go and take our coffee and we just went for a walk. And, you know, and I've met a fair few people down in Altona Coffee Shop and I've met a fair few because we found a new coffee shop. Mm-hmm. We found a new coffee shop down in Altona. So I've, I've met a few new few new friends and stuff down there. Though, so mm-hmm. It's good to hear. At least you got uh, some, a new, you found a new local coffee shop where you can. Yeah, I've been local, yeah, I've found a new local coffee shop, yeah. yeah that's good. <clears throat> that's good. So, like... So, so you mentioned that you're living in in Altona, yeah? Um, yeah. So how can you, do you think like the community of Altona do really reach out with each other? Do they support the people around? Um, like, can you give an example, like how do these people support uh, around the community? Do they, do you do it online? Do you, do they give uh, uh, motivation, how does Altona, inspiration? How does, Altona, how does the Altona community support each other? Yeah, yeah. There hasn't really been from the government. There hasn't really been much support from the government, but now, but now it's finished. It's sort of, it's sort of, sort of starting to get back. Everything's sort of starting to get back to normal again, though. Mm-hmm. Like you know, you can now, you can now sit. And you can actually sit inside and sit and go inside a coffee shop and stuff and meet new people, meet new people that way. Mm-hmm. But apart from that, though, they they haven't because. The government couldn't really, apart from giving out, they gave out grants stuff. They couldn't really, they couldn't really do much because we were in that bubble. So we can only go, we can only go for you know the five k's for a while though. So it was hard to, it was hard to, it was hard for them to sort of um to sort of you know put on any event stuff. And now there's yeah. there's events that put on events down in the community center at the Altona Community Center and stuff like that that people can go to and stuff like those. So yeah. Yeah, but it's it's good because uh, every, almost everything is open now. But uh, yeah. when you have when you're at home, um, what are the challenges that you've that you've experienced? Like when we're on all lockdown, like we're just at home, we're just staying. Uh, just uh, every- mainly boredom, mainly mm-hmm. boredom. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. Mainly, but um, thank God for Netflix yeah. and Foxtel, huh? Because mm-hmm. <laughs> I watch a few series. I watch a few series on Netflix and Foxtel because that's all I could do. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, my doctor. Unfortunately, my dog passed away as well, though. So, mm. unfortunately, my dog passed away through COVID and stuff, though. So, I miss, so I miss him by like, hanging around with him and playing with him and stuff, though. So, mm, sorry to hear that. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. Mm. It was very old, though. Yeah. Oh. It was six and a half. Uh, anyways, uh, aside from Netflix, so do you still do sports and um, are you modifying your lifestyle now? Do you? Yeah, I still, I will, the, my Temmie bowling league started back up. So, so I go, I, I go Temmie bowling. I play in a league every every Monday night, mm-hmm. and now um, and now some of them we, we're going to start going away water skiing again. So we go water skiing with my family up at Tokemore. So now, so now we're going to go now it's summer and stuff, and the water's high enough. We're going to go start going up there and go water skiing again and stuff. Though, so, so we're going to so it's sort of so now COVID sort of the restrictions have eased a lot. Though we can get back into doing that though, huh? Mm-hmm. Because as I said though, the caravan park was closed. Yeah. The yeah. water ski caravan park was closed because obviously COVID and stuff like that. So we couldn't do that stuff though. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. So um Aaron, um um theoretically, let's say the pandemic ends tomorrow. 
or next week. So what are you, what are your plans? What are your hopes if the pandemic ends? What are your um what do you plan to do after the pandemic? Just to um just to start going back to the gym more regularly and trying to lose a bit of this the COVID belly that I've put on. <laughs> the COVID the COVID belly that I've put on like I think a lot of people have made. a lot of people, yeah me I'm yeah I'm I'm guilty with that as well. <laughs> yeah put on put on the COVID COVID belly though. So yeah. So um so you're gonna try and lose a bit of this weight and go back to start going back to the gym and then and then um and we can go we can start going away water skiing again now. So and the Temi buying league started up and the gym's re back open though. So my life's sort of all getting back to normal now. It's sort of all getting back to what it was like pre COVID. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Aaron, um so how so you mentioned that um I think your main support is your family. And you told me that your dad is your main cares manager. How in, how is it important? How has it been the support of your family in your life, and in what ways has it affected you since um, since you got the disease or the the disability? Yeah, well, my my family has been a very big support for me, especially my dad, because mm-hmm. my dad took um my dad took two years off a long off his long service off a half pay to get me better. So um so. Especially my dad's been a very big support to me, but my mum's also been there and supported me as well, though. And just, and just, um, and my brother's also been there. So I've, I've, I've had a lot of support, and that's why I reckon I'm where I am today, though. Mm-hmm. But that, mainly dad, my dad's been my biggest support over, over my whole journey because mm-hmm. dad managed all my dad managed all my NDS funding. Mm-hmm. He does a lot for me, though. So yeah, mainly my dad has been my biggest support over, over my whole journey. I'm happy to hear that. Um, so what advice could you give to, to our listeners who are still confused on how to manage their life because of their circumstances? Like just, with disability. Just never take any day as a blessing and, and always try and see the positive in every situation. Mm-hmm. Always try and always try and look on the bright side of life. As I said before, I was very depressed for for about three or four years. And then I come to a realization where well, I, I'm, I, I can't change so, so I can just either live life, live life and accept my disability, you know, or just, mm-hmm. you know, or, or my parents. So I, I think it's just come to a point where you just have to accept that you, you've got a disability and just move on with life and 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 and, 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 um, and, mm-hmm. and accept the challenges and try and get through the challenges and sit down and work out, work out a way to get through the different challenges in life. Because everyone's got challenges. Everyone's got challenges in their life, disability or no disability. But it's how it's how you work. It's how you work or work around that change and challenges and get yeah. and get through them. Yeah. Because there's always light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, that's nice. Um, how do you think? Uh, what what do you think to be done to educate the community about living with disability? Like, what more can we do to educate? What more do? Yeah, to educate the community. Just. Just be more, be more tolerant and be more patient, and try and be more understanding. Try and be more understanding, and and um and don't treat and every disability is different. Don't treat just because you've got a disability doesn't mean they're all the same. Some people got intellectual disabilities, some people got physical disabilities, and like my physical disability is my eyesight and my eyesight and my hand and stuff. But but someone else might be in a wheelchair and stuff. So so their their support. Their the support that they're going to need is going to be different to my support that I'm going to need. Mm-hmm. So you've just got to try and understand and judge and judge and, and try to accept that accept that they've got a disability mm-hmm. and try and be a lot more patient. Try and be a lot more patient with with the people that have the disability mm-hmm. and try and be a lot more understanding. Mm-hmm. That's good. So. Uh, thank you so much, Aaron, for sharing your wisdom and how and giving us motivation and inspiration or words. Um, yeah, we did learn a lot from our conversations today. And it's good that um, to our listeners to, to know that uh, acceptance, positivity, and um, is are the two, I mean, main thing or or main, uh, important uh, things to to do. Uh, don't take things for granted. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And sort of live like every day is like your last day because you never know what's mm-hmm. around the corner. So don't take things for granted. Yeah, just to continue living life. That's it. Yeah, yeah that's, that's good. Yeah, 
and don't dwell over the little things in life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And there's always there's always someone worse off for you than you in life, though. So mm-hmm. so take so try and be blessed and try and make the most out of try and make the most out of out of the situation that you've been that you've got. Mm-hmm. Thanks. So. Thank you. Thank you for that, Aaron. Right, so thank you everyone for watching us and. I think if you have any questions, uh, John. Um, uh, so, in behalf of uh, Speaker Speakers Bank, um, we would like to thank you everyone for listening, and thank you very much, Aaron, for sharing your um, wisdom in this session. And if you have any questions or have any suggestions or any topic you want us to cover, please contact us on o zero three nine six eight seven seven zero six six or um, visit us at www.speakersbank.org.au. Again, this is John and my partner, Ferdinand, saying thank you once again, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Speakers Bank, and to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. So goodbye uh, for now, and have a great day, and keep safe, everyone. Yeah, thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Aaron. No worries, no worries, anytime.